In this video, we'll create a responsive image slider using only HTML and CSS by taking advantage of a really cool CSS trick that I want to show you. So before we get started, I want to let you know that in the description of this video will be a download for the starter files that go along with this video, as well as the completed version of the slider. So inside of the starter files, you'll see we have an image folder with the four images used in the slider. And then we have index.html, which I'm going to be using sublime text with, and then I'm going to have it open in Google Chrome in the background, as you can see here. So once we move over to index.html and sublime text, we'll see that we have a little bit of information already filled out for us in the body section. And if I open it up here, you'll see we have the four images displaying as well as the uh, first image displaying two times. So later we'll learn, learn why we have that displaying as the last image and the first. So to keep the image inside the screen when we flex the window down, let's go ahead and add our first style because as you can see it's overflowing outside of the screen. So up in style type text slash CSS, we're just going to add um, internal style here to stay within the index.html file, but ideally you want to link to a style.css file. Okay, so let's start by referencing the div ID slider, which wraps around the slider images. So since it's a div ID, we'll start with the hashtag rather than the period, which is for classes. So we'll say hashtag slider, and then we're going to say overflow hidden to make sure that the image stays within the window. So now if we go and refresh and flex the window down, we'll see that the image stays within there, uh, within the window without scrolling off to the side. Okay, so let's move on to the figure tag beneath that. So I wanna reference the slider ID again, and then we'll reference the figure tag afterwards. So we can select it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say position relative, and then we're gonna give a width to the whole figure. Um, so if we give it a 100% width, you'll see that we still see the images beneath it as I showed you with uh, scrolling down. So what we're gonna do, since there are five different images here that we'll be sliding through, is we're gonna give this a 500% width to make up for 100% uh, per image that we're gonna reference the HTML. And then for our positioning, we're gonna say margin zero and left zero to pull the image to the left and minimize the space above it. Okay, so now you can see at this width, we have the image displaying underneath, but if I were to flex the window open a little bit so we can see the whole image, you'll see that we have the images displaying next to one another because we gave it the 500% width. So the next thing that we'll do is let's drop down to the actual image tag so we'll reference the slider ID and then the figure tag again, followed by IMG for image. And we wanna give the images a width of 20%. So given the 500% width overall, it'll take up 100% of the screen. And then to make them display next to one another, uh, rather than below, we're just gonna say float left. Okay, so now we can't see the other images if we widen the screen because it's gonna take up 100% uh, of the width, but they're all there next to that first image. So the next objective will be to slide over a certain percentage so we can see the next image in line. And we're gonna do that by using something called keyframes. And with keyframes, we can use CSS animation to move elements around the page by giving them a different pixel amount or percentage. So we're gonna say at keyframes slider, which we'll reference with some animation in just a moment. And we're gonna say at 0%, we want it to slide um, from the left zero, because at 0%, we want it to stay on the first slide. Then at 20%, we're also gonna say left zero 
because the width of our first image is 20% total. So basically what we're saying is for the first 20% of the animation time we're going to give this in just a moment, we want it to stay at left zero to display the first slide. Then once we get past that, say to 25% of the animation time, we want it to shift 100% to the right. So we're going to say left negative 100% to get it to shift. So we're not going to see any transition or animation take place yet because we need to set that for our slider figure. So let's go up and we're going to say animation and let's give it a time of 20 seconds and then we'll just say slider so the keyframes will select slider since we gave it that name and then we'll say infinite so it keeps sliding um, and doesn't stop. So as you can see, when we refresh, it's going to shift over to the negative 100% mark at the 25% uh, of 20 second mark, but it's going to start to transition back to left zero. So we'll say at the 45% of 20 seconds, we want it to stay at left negative 100%. So basically, that's going to keep us at 100% or or negative 100% rather on the second slide from 25% to 45% of the 20 second animation that we gave it. So now let's say 50% we want it to shift negative 200% and then we'll also say 70% we want it to shift negative 200% left. So that's going to keep us for 20% of 20 seconds or 4 seconds that's going to keep us on the third slide as we can see right here with the number 3 and then once we get to 70% it's going to start to shift back to left 0. So now moving on let's get us to the fourth slide by using 75% and then we'll say 95% left negative 300 percent so we can keep us on that fourth slide for 20 percent of 20 seconds and if we just give it a second we'll get to that um, fourth slide here and then what we'll find is for the last five seconds or five percent rather it's going to shift us all the way back to left zero so what we're going to do is we're going to say at 100%, we want it to go left, negative 400%. And that's going to bring us to the last slide here, which is going to match the first slide. So if we change that to image 3, for example, instead of image 1, let me just show you what happens. You'll need to look closely, but once we get to the fourth slide, it's going to transition to the third slide and then jump immediately to the first slide without shifting. So three to one. So what we're doing is we're bringing it back and kind of revolving the door back to the first slide by having the last and the first image match up. So now if we go and refresh it one more time and we get to the um, fourth slide if we just give it a second here, it's going to shift us back to the first slide, but we're not going to be able to see the change in the animation starting over being on infinite because it's going to be the same exact image. Okay, so that does it for the tutorial. I want to thank you for watching. Please remember to like this video, share, and subscribe. Then I'll see you in the next video.